The child tax credit might be back, and its new version, according to some, is even better. The policy is part of a bipartisan and bicameral $70 billion tax deal that would expand benefits to lower-income families while giving significant tax breaks to businesses. Joining us now, Senator Michael Bennett, who represents the state of Colorado. All right, bipartisan and bicameral, but there are a lot of House Democrats who are saying this doesn't go far enough, including Rosa DeLauro, who is a champion of the child tax credit. What do you say uh, to lawmakers like her? Well, I would say she's not a champion. She is the champion <laughs> of the child tax credit. And I have been very proud to be her partner over here with Sherrod Brown over many years. You know, together, we had a version of the credit in 21 that cut childhood poverty in America uh, in half. And a lot of people said that couldn't be done. It did. It worked the way we said it would work, and it was an extraordinary achievement. That got undone for reasons we can talk about. And now we do have the chance to pass a bipartisan bill. It's nowhere near as good as the 2021 bill, but it is bipartisan. It will lift uh, 400,000 kids in this country out of poverty. It will benefit 16 million children. And if you are a working parent making $15,000, uh, as a waitress, for example, and you've got two kids, your child tax credit is going to go from just under $2,000 to over $3,600. So um, I think we're going to hopefully live to fight another day with Rosa in 2025 when we're hopefully reversing the Trump tax cuts. But I think this is an important step forward for the credit and for a bipartisan consensus around it. Do you think it's going to pass? Because there's also now some Republican grumblings about it. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of Republican, <laughs> Republican grumbling about it. And uh, I don't know whether it'll pass. I think we've got to do everything we can to try to get it through the House and the Senate. You know, we, we, it's rare to have a bipartisan tax bill around this place. Usually stuff passes by 51 votes around here by Democrats, and then the Republicans reverse it and go back and forth. It'd be a lot better for the American people, especially for the most vulnerable people in our society, if they could have some predictability when it came to tax law. So I hope it'll pass, and I hope we can improve on this work. And if we're, you know, by the way, while we're talking about must-pass stuff, Katie, I got to put a plug in. We've also got to get the work done on Ukraine as well, which is one of the most important pieces of must-pass legislation that this Congress will ever confront. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you about that. There's that meeting at the White House right now with Senate and, and uh, House leaders. What do you hope is being discussed right now? I hope they're figuring out a way to, 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 to put everybody's weapons down and get done what needs to be done. The Ukrainian people have astonished the world uh, over the last two years with their courage and with what they've achieved. They've taken back half the land that Putin stole from them. They've won battle after battle after battle. They've opened uh, seaways for food to get out without even having a navy. They disabled, basically, Putin's navy and meant that the world could be fed. And their fight has never been a fight for Ukraine. It's a fight for democracy. And it would be shameful if, at this moment, we let the extremes of the Republican Party dictate our, the foreign policy in the United States uh, when we've been actually such a leader in, the, in, in this context. And I hope what we're seeing in the White House is the leadership on both sides of the, of the Congress coming together to say this really, unlike most things around here where people are used to failing and blaming the other side for that failure, this is a moment when we actually can't fail. And we got to support each other so we can get this done on behalf of the American people. Let me ask you one more question. This is on immigration. Are Democrats making a miscalculation on immigration? Does an immigration bill need to pass something to, to harden the border, the southern border, and, well, and it, uh, yeah. new rules I mean, Katie, for the migrants yeah. that are crossing? I mean, as you'll remember, I was part of the Gang of Eight in 2013 that wrote the last bipartisan bill that passed the Senate with 68 votes, had a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million people that are here that are undocumented, had the most progressive DREAM Act that we had ever passed. The world has changed since then, tragically. You know, we should have passed that bill through the House, never passed through the House. And today, there are 10 or 11,000 people on many days that are being smuggled to the southern border of the United States. 
there are transnational gangs that have basically taken over the immigration policy of the U.S., and we have to respond. You know, and I think we should respond. I wouldn't have, you know, chosen the Ukraine aid package to be the place that we did it, but that is where we are. So I think we need to make sure this bill is one that makes sense for the American people, is consistent with our values in terms of you know, our, our, our history as a nation of immigrants and our commitment to the rule of law. And we have to remember, Katie, no matter what we do here, the work is still massively undone because there's still 11 million people in America that are getting up to pick fruits and vegetables every single morning, to, to, to swing hammers in this country every single morning, going to school in the United States, who still have no pathway to citizenship in this country because of our broken immigration system. So this is another step on the path, but it's a reminder of the costliness of a lost opportunity like that Gang of Eight bill all those many years ago that would have, I think, not only fixed our, our immigration system, but meant that Donald Trump would never have been elected president of the United there States. There are a lot of stressors for what's happening down at the border and what's happening in, in um, democratic cities across this country. There are also a lot of hard-working individuals who are doing jobs and want the chance to participate in the system, pay taxes, et cetera. They're using the, the resources. They want to pay taxes on top of it to be yeah. legal. Um, Senator Bennett, thank you very much for joining us. Always good to have you. Coming up.